It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Commanders. Next on Madden NFL 25. Just outside of the nation's capital and nearby Landover, Maryland, we're getting a look at the enormous Commander's Field. Welcome to another entertaining matchup, folks. Kate Scott, Brock Heward on the call in this one. And Brock, got a couple of running backs down on the field who can really take over their offenses when they get in the groove. And I think that's going to be the ultimate goal of both of these offenses, right? I mean, there's just no confusion about it. They want to get their bell cow in that groove and get them going. Find that rhythm where they're ripping off chunk yardage run after run and then just keep on feeding that beast. In a game like this, Whichever offense could get that rhythm and run game going first is likely going to be your winner. Katie York sent to get this one started. And we're off and running from Landover. Ty Chandler to return. He's brought down at what looks like the 24-yard line. Well, here come the Vikings, taking the field for their first drive of the game. And we'll get a look at their signal caller playing in his seventh season. If we had asked Sam Darnold coming out of USC as the third overall pick in the draft to write the story of his career, I don't think he would have written some of these chapters. But in the end, it makes you tougher. It makes you grittier. And playing quarterback in the NFL is a lot about that. Your ability to just withstand adversity and to continue to get up time after time after time. And Sam Darnold has shown that kind of perseverance. Give him four that time, so six to go on second down. That is just a good, solid run right there. I know, that's pretty basic commentary, but sometimes football can be basic. It keeps you on schedule. That kind of yards per carry, and you move the sticks. Second and six now. As a man, Justin Jefferson. And he's brought down after a nice gain and a first down. Well, that is pretty darn impeccable timing between the two. They hit a curl route of that length. It takes great anticipation and precision by the quarterback and the receiver on the other end finishing it, doing his job. They'll head up first and 10 from the 42. To throw, here's Darnold. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy of midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. Time and again, receivers will tell their quarterbacks, just give me a chance. Just give me a chance. Just throw it up and give me the opportunity. Well, in this case, with even two defenders trying to cover that wide receiver, couldn't get it done. Second down carry for Jones. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. We take a break from his regularly scheduled program in a pass coverage duties to see him adding a little contribution in the run support. And his teammates, you can just see the body language. A little nod, a little grin. They'll welcome the reinforcements every time. Commanders with an extra DB out there to defend this third down. Able to find Jones. He finds him 16 yards and a new set of downs. This dude's just simply got a nose for the marker no matter how they get him the ball, Kate. Hand it to him, and he sniffs out that first down. Get it to him on a screen, and it's no different. He surges ahead and keeps this drive moving. So it'll be another first and 10 for him, Brock, down at the opposing 37. Off the play fake, he'll throw. Bails out of the pocket quick. Oh, look at this, here he goes. Give him 24 on that play. And that's going to give the Vikings the first down. Obviously, a defense wants to take away all the reads and prevent any kind of big throw for the first down. Fine. Well, this QB, he'll just lower his head and gash the defense with one of the biggest runs of the game. Still on the move, coming to the line for first and 10. From the red zone now. This one's caught. And that play is brought to a halt. So they're going to say at the five-yard line. That is the epitome of staying on schedule. That kind of completion right there on first down. Well, it opens up the entirety of the playbook for second down. 
On the third and short in your back pocket, you can get even more aggressive and take that shot. Now Darnold. And he's going to score. Touchdown, Minnesota. The Vikings finish up an excellent opening series. It's a TJ Hawkinson touchdown. Well, you couldn't ask for a better start to a game than that. The offense taking it all the way down the field and finishing with six. These opening drives, Kate, are such tone setters. It is why every offense loves to script their first 15 plays, right? Everybody knows what's coming. Allows you during the practice week to get into rhythm, but even better when you're that sharp, that crisp, and you finish off and get the early lead. Now it's Will Reichert on for the extra point. That one splits the uprights. And they add one on to their first touchdown of the contest. Following the score, they've got a record out and ready to boot it away. Chris Rodriguez now to return. And this return gets to the 30 before he stopped. So now the Commanders will get their turn at an opening drive of the game. And leading them out, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, the number two pick in the NFL draft out of LSU, Jaden Daniels. Well, here he comes. Here comes the Heisman Trophy winner from a season ago, and what a show he put on, man. He was a stat stuffer. Over 1,100 yards rushing, Looked a lot like Lamar Jackson did back in the day in college. And oh, by the way, 40 touchdowns passing two. You know why this Washington organization took him so high in this draft. They want him to be Lamar Jackson. They want him to be dynamic. And he's going to get his career off and running. You know, kid, over the years, I have heard defensive coordinators say, hey, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. You got to earn the right for me to call blitzes. And when you call a blitz and you don't get home and you don't hit the quarterback, you've earned nothing. This ball's cut by McCaffrey. And he's tackled after gaining a handful. Short yardage situation here. It's third and two. Daniels from the pistol. Complete beyond the mark. And he's taken down directly on that 43-yard line. They'll get 18 yards there. And the Commanders will have a first. You know what I like about that, Kate? I like that they're not coming out slow. They're willing to go with some looks here that will yield big yardage down the field instead of just settling for dinking and dunking the ball. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. First carry now for Austin Eckler. And he scampers ahead and gets two on the carry. Hey, we know running the ball in the NFL is hard, and that play pretty indicative of it. Here's the key, though. At the end of the game, those type of plays got to be in the minority, and the majority have got to do some damage. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Play fake here. Daniels flushed out of the pocket. Now he takes it. It's out of harm's way after springing together some nice yards on that run. You know, Kate, back in the day, we had a slip and slide to practice for moments just like that. Actually practicing how to slide and get out of harm's way. Nice gain on the play. And denied that defense yet another chance to take a shot on him. Third down, one yard to go. From the gun, it's Daniels. Short pass caught by his tight end. And he runs this to the 25 before being brought down. Give him an even 10 yards on the play. And that'll be good for a Washington first. I'm not sure how this defense let that guy slip through him like that. On third down, nonetheless, he took that snap as an opportunity. And man, did he make an impact play. On first down, here's Daniels. Throw complete to Eckler. And he's brought down for a loss. The rookie out of Alabama, they're on the tackle. 
Well, there was never a play in any playbook I ever saw designed for a lost yardage play when you throw the ball. But if there's any solace, at least it was first down. A couple more chances to make up for it. Now Daniels off the play action. That one is incomplete. Couldn't hang on through the contact. Tough one to retain through that hit. And things look tougher now with third and long. I think that was a throw, Kate, that just came a little bit too late. What it did is it gave that defense time to come up and deliver a pop and knock the ball loose before he could secure it fully. Daniels throwing on third. And now he's going to head out of bounds after a nice game. They rip off a big chunk of field, and it sets him up with first and goal. You know, they call that the money down for a reason, because you're just simply not going to last long in the NFL if you don't convert a good portion of your third downs. It's the money down. And nice to see them roll the dice and continue the series. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. Trying to run in, Eckler. And they've got him behind the line for a big loss. This is one of those situations, Kate, where I watch the body language of the running back because it'd be very easy for him to raise his hands up, look to the sideline and his O-line and go, what am I supposed to do there? There was nothing, no time at all to try and escape and react. Instead, it goes backwards. Trying again with Eckler. And he pushed for it, but they managed to stop him at the two. Only a yard that time. A defensive stand brewing here, and it brings up third and goal. Well, you're getting a little bit closer, but you can feel the pressure starting to mount. Unless you're committed to playing four downs here, this becomes a critical third down call. Third and goal. He keeps it left on the option. And he gets back to the line, but no more. Three straight runs, stop short of the end zone. And now what do they do on fourth and goal? Well, this defense has risen to the occasion. And now, well now, Kate, they put this offense in the unenviable position of deciding what to do on fourth and goal. Katie York now on for the field goal. This is a chip shot from the left hash. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And it's dropped back down now to a four-point game. Well, that's the type of long, sustained drive that takes some of the starch out of your opponent. The only negative is that the kicking team was out there for a field goal and not an extra point. But they do come away with three. We've got a good one here. They've cut the lead to four as they send it away. Here's a return from the seven. And this drive will start inside the 25. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Starting the drive with a give to Jones. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. We will not get another play in here. That's going to do it for quarter number one. 7-3 is our score. We'll return to Landover right after this. now for the second quarter to begin. Vikings in control of it. They have second down behind the sticks. Has his man. It's Addison. 16 yards on the play. And it'll bring up a Minnesota first down. Good offenses. Okay, good play callers know how to utilize their personnel. They know where they wanted him. They wanted him in a route in space where he could make that initial play comfortably, but then go to work after it. New set of downs for him at the 38. Darnold looking to throw. And that tackle stops him after a solid game. Well, that's a pretty similar result to a first down run play. Moves it forward, keeps you on schedule, and makes second and third down a whole lot easier to manage. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. From the 43. Pressure's there, and the commander's got him. And that pushes him back. Third down coming up. 
Even from the booth, Kate, I could hear it. I could hear that front seven telling the guys on the back end, hey, all I need is a couple seconds of lockdown from you guys, and I'm going to get to this QB. You promise that you deliver? And that's exactly what they did. Wasted no time in getting that sack. And for the Commanders, a fifth defensive back out there. They're going nickel on third down. Throwing here, Darnold. Dumps it off to his running back. And the defense waiting for him at the line, and he goes down. I got to be honest. It hurts a little extra when it comes on third down, but it really doesn't matter what down it is. If a completed pass is stopped at the line of scrimmage offensively, that's a failure. Defensively, that's a success. Now we'll see Ryan Wright come on for the Vikings to punt this away on fourth. And the sunlight's not a problem for him. He looks up and makes the fair catch. That punt goes unanswered. No return there. And the Commanders will go on offense. First and ten now. Here's Daniels. Ertz reels it in. And he'll take it up to the 30 before being brought down. He's just one of those guys, Kate. Even when he's not open, he's still a target thanks to that physicality and his ability to just play bully ball. They don't like forcing into coverage, but sometimes when you got a bully like him that can create space, you just find a way to get him the ball. From the 30 on second down. He puts some air under a deep throw to the left. He had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose, incomplete. You know, he's not going to be happy the catch was almost made, but he's going to be thrilled that he broke it up. Gives him a chance to do a little jawing after the play. Let that other guy know he just roughed him up and lost a big catch. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Empty backfield now. The running back motions out left. He has the first over the middle. And he'll get it up near the 38-yard line before going down. Eight yards on the gain, and the drive continues forward. You're not going to last long in the National Football League if you don't convert a good chunk of your third downs. Nice find there to continue the series. New set of downs for him at the 38. Again, Daniels to the air. Throw came out right as the defense got to him. That's an incomplete pass. You know, when we were growing up in the backyard, we call them alligators. One alligator, two alligator, three alligator. He needed another alligator in order to get that ball off. Credit the defense for forcing the incompletion. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Out of the gun, Daniels. It's taken in by Eckler. And he's able to move past the 45 before going out. I know I could sound like a broken record when I talk about timing and getting the ball out on time and on rhythm. But these outcuts, it is so imperative. And the best of them make it look oh so easy. Third and just two to go. Shotgun snap to Daniels. Quick hitter complete. And he's taken down directly on that 43-yard line. They come through with a nice gain of 10 and a first down. That's what we call situational football. You spend all week working on your nickel passing game package to take advantage of third downs just like that. Daniels on first down. He gets this one to McLaurin. And he's able to get this down to the 36. It's not just imperative that a quarterback knows man or zone. Same thing for a receiver, especially on a drag route. When he sees zone coverage like that, just settle down, find the soft spot, and give your quarterback a chance. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. From the 36, this is hauled in by McLaurin. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. I'm sure coach and play caller doesn't mind making the job a little bit easier. You know, play calling's a lot simpler and easier when you count on the offense to move the chains on those early downs. First and 10 now from the 30. Oh. 
And he stopped just before he reaches the red zone at the 21. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. From the 21. Throw left side, complete. And he's going to be taken down near the eight-yard line. That's a gain of 13, and it sets him up with first and goal. That's just great instincts. Go air it out on second down rather than just play conservative and run it. They hit a weak point in the coverage and don't need to worry about third down at all. They'll break the huddle and come up on first and goal. Shotgun handoff now to Eckler. And he's going to take it in for the Washington touchdown. The Commanders take a second quarter lead. It's an Austin Eckler touchdown. They kept it on the ground as opposed to airing it out. And that time, well, Brock, the ground game paid off. Well, these great rushing attacks down here that could score rushing touchdowns, it takes the whole party getting involved. Yeah, the burst of the running back was tremendous. How about the launch of his blockers right off the line of scrimmage? That's a touchdown the entire way, and it took the entire group offensively. On is Katie York for the PAT. That one right down the middle. And they'll continue adding to their lead. On oh, now is York to kick this one away. On the return, here comes Ken A. Wangu. And this will give them decent field position. The return gets out to the 30. Well, we've already seen some nice plays here, and we're going to see plenty more before this game ends. But you might be thinking, with well, plays like that, my guy's ratings should be better. Well, you're not alone. you got a chance to let the Madden Ratings Hotline know just what you're thinking. Give them a call. 1-844-MADDEN-1. And the commanders get home. They drop in. And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. In theory, Kate, that's exactly what complimentary man coverage is supposed to look like. The DBs, well, they're sticky on the back end of it. The front end, that pass rush, it makes an impact that gets home. But of course we know, it's not that simple. It is really tough to lock down a full field for more than a second or two. Offense to the line for second down. Trying again, following the set. Oh, they're on him, and he's dropped again. And the back-to-back -back sacks. Nice work by the defense there. Sets him up with a third down. First sack, wobbled the cart. This one, I think, sent it off the rails entirely. Taking the L on each of the first two plays leaves this offense looking at a very unlikely third down pickup. We've hit the two-minute warning now from the nation's capital. The Vikings with a long ways to go for a score. Commanders with an extra DB out there to defend this third down. Straight ahead they go with Jones. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. The Commanders take a timeout. They're first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. Minnesota lined up in punt formation. And after that drive went backwards, he's going to send this one forward. And he drives it towards the other end of the field. And he makes the fair catch inside the 45. The Commanders, then running back Austin Eckler, headed back to the field. We don't get a return out of that punt. And they'll get ready to go on offense. Daniels. No hesitation, and that one's caught. 
And he'll cross the 50 and start pushing onto the opposing side of the field. That is a textbook first down completion. Sets up second and very manageable and creates space to take that shot downfield. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. Daniels now. Complete. It's McLaurin. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. Part of the reason I leave you pregame, Kate, and get down to that field and watch these guys throw and catch is I want to see their timing. I want to see their anticipation. That is picture perfect right there. A crossing route thrown that quickly tells me these two are on the same page. From the gun, it's Daniels. He's on the move. Oh, he was on the move, but so was the defense, and they take him down. And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. These quarterbacks are so good with their clock in their head between the tackles. But you get outside the pocket, and you've got to have that same ability. If you hesitate for a second, the defenses with their speed at this level, they'll find a way to bring you to the ground. Back to the line they go. It's second down. Another try following the sack. Has a man. It's Brown. And he's able to reach the 40 on that play. Washington calls it second timeout. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. A less than ideal third and eight here. Daniels from the pistol. And that catch is made down the right sideline. And he gets this forward to the 19. It's a gain of 21 yards to pick up that first down. Move the chains! Gotta move them chains! Build momentum and keep that defense on its heels. They have themselves another first and ten. From the red zone now. Completed he fights off the tackle, but he lost the ball. He left the ball behind. And it's a turnover. The defense has it. And they bring him down up at the 12-yard line. It's halftime from near the nation's capital. The commanders polling in front after two. Now we'll send you down the East Coast to Orlando. Turn things over to our buddy Jonathan Coachman in the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Kate, thanks very much. Back to you and Brock in a bit. But first, time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Austin Eckler who was the star of that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, thank you, Coach. And we are back and about set to begin the second half. The Vikings have it teed up, and play resumes with the kick. Jamison Crowder on the return. Returns looking good so far. And they finally bring him down after a huge return into their territory. Everyone spends time in that locker room, Kate. Offensively, defensively, rewriting your scripts, putting your adjustments and plans together for the second half. Special teams, guys. Well, that's exactly how they wanted to start this second half, with an explosion and setting their offense up for success. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Now the shotgun give to Eckler. And as they bring him down, let's check the penalty flag. So now, partner, got to reevaluate what to do on this next snap because the holding call pushes him back quite a ways. Trying the inside hand off to Eckler. And the middle holds. They don't get anything on the run. No gain, and things looking a lot tougher for them now with second and 20. I know these DNs love to get to the quarterback. I know that sacks many times equals a bigger payday. But doing the dirty work, playing the run well, that's what the best of the ends do in this league. Here we go, second and very long. Got him in over the middle, complete. And he's got a decent gain before being brought down. 
It takes a certain level of fearlessness, craziness, to work over the middle of the field in this league. You're fighting through guys as you go, and all the while you know you could take a lick at any time. Defense looking to defend the marker on third down. Here's Daniels. Dump off complete to his running back. And he's going to be brought down at the 23-yard line. You can earn your money in the NFL in all sorts of different ways, but defensively, in a league where you're just not hitting as much in training camp, you're not tackling as much as they got to in the old days, when you can make a play in the open field, keep them short like that, I promise you some money will follow. Looking to throw. And they won't do it. That falls incomplete on fourth down. Even the best receivers, they've got occasional breaks in concentration. You just never want to see it happen. One of the most important snaps of the game. If we know anything, it all comes his way. They're out and set. First and ten. Now I give up the middle to Jones. And he won't get anything there. Several defenders nearby to hold him up. Call it no gain on that run, and they face second and ten. These big D tackles in this league, they love weaponizing their size right in the middle of the field. It is so hard to clear a lane against them. And once he got his paw on him, it was dead on arrival. Second and ten now. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. As a defense, you got to see the pass. You got to time up your hit, and you got to jar that ball loose. Not a lot of offensive players are hanging on to that one through a well placed hit. No connection on the last play, and out third down. Shotgun snap, looking to throw. Into the hands of Jefferson. Complete. And he'll be brought down along the 25 yard line. Those little short throws, they are high percentage and certainly bread and butter. But they really run the risk of a quick tackle just like that and being stopped short of the sticks. The Vikings getting their punt team out. Ryan Wright's the one to send it away. And he sends this away. Definitely his best kick of the game thus far. Fair catch calling for, and he's got it. Right near the 30-yard line. No return on that punt. And they're going to take over possession. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Back to throw. Here's Daniels. Escapes the pocket. And they get to him as he was trying to make something happen. And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. Never ever a great look when your quarterback's picking himself up a few seconds into a drive. They're going to need a lot more fight on second down and a whole lot of yardage to get this back on track. All right, here we go. Second down. Out of the gun, Daniels. And they get to him again. And back-to-back -back takedowns behind the line of scrimmage set him up now with third down. I think his decision-making wrote a check that his legs couldn't catch this time. This QB could run, and he's ranging, looking for space, looking for an outlet. But there was none to be had. No escape route available this time. Defense with an excellent opportunity at a stop here on third down. Now Daniels to throw. Escapes a defender. Has some daylight through the 40. And he breaks into enemy territory before being stopped on a huge game. You know, Kent, we often talk about flipping the field in special teams, right? A, a kick return, a good punt. Well, an explosive play like that does the exact same thing. Look at the difference in field position. By hitting on that shot, you've totally flipped the field and the tone of this drive. 
So the big play gets him just beyond midfield. It's first down. Eckler running dead ahead. And he only manages one couple of defenders there to bring him down. Okay, that's a run that's whole hum on the stat sheet. But if you see a bigger play on the ground later on, it will largely be because of a play just like that one, softening up the front and opening the door for a bigger gap in the future. They'll come to the line here, second and nine. Shotgun snap to Daniels. That one is incomplete. Couldn't hang on through the contact. He was looking for Terry McLaurin. And that's going to leave him with a tough third and long. You know, that was almost a nice chunk play before he was able to recover and provide the hit that dislodges the football. You like to see that physical edge and scrappiness to contest any kind of shot plays deep. Here's pressure, and he's dropped by the Vikings. And the defense comes through, and that's going to back him up and bring up fourth down. This is one of those situations where QB's strength and ability to run can be a great blessing, but can also be a curse. We've seen him use his feet before. This guy can escape, and that's a blessing. But it can be a curse because sometimes you think you can get out of everything. And this defense just proved he couldn't. Commanders punting on fourth down, and they're going to bring out the ever-reliable lefty Vets Tressway. It's fielded at the 14, and they bring him down to put a stop to that return. That one an impressive 57-yard kick, and it's going to be Vikings football. First and 10, here's Jones. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, he's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. Now he'll throw off the play fake. He's got him. That's Addison. And he's going to be brought down after getting this up to the 22. Well, he saw his guys pick up the blitz. Well, he felt them pick it up anyway if he wasn't looking at them. But with their effort on his behalf, I think this QB felt owed to them. And the group up front to find somebody to get a completion so that effort up front wasn't in vain. Throwing on third and long. And that's a win for the pass rush. Hit as he threw it leads to the incompletion. Fourth down coming up. Well, he needed another second to deliver the throw he wanted to. you got to give a lot of credit that time, Kate, to the pass rush for getting in and forcing him to dish it before he was ready. They're out now, ready to punt it. And they could really use a good one here. And he finally gets a hold of one here. This is hit far. And he's calling for a fair catch, which is made at the 33-yard line. The Commanders and QB Jaden Daniels headed out for their next look on offense. And he'll be happy to keep letting it fly as much as he has all game. Look at these numbers. They show just how effective he's been in captaining this offense. Now start the drive with Eckler. And the defense is all over this one for a big loss. Hey, Kate, you were out there with me on the West Coast. And I was spoiled and you were spoiled. When we watch that Legion of Boom, we watch two of the best safeties in the game, Cam and Earl. Bring in the pain, bring in the heat, bring in tackles just like that for significant losses. Offense to the line for second down. And he'll take this up to around the 30-yard line. It's a three-yard gain for him. That leaves third and 14 now. I could promise you that's not what it looked like on the practice field nor on the whiteboard. Typically, QB run is going to net you a whole lot more yardage than that. But let's give some credit. Strong effort by that defensive front who contained a play that typically goes for a whole lot more. He's got it. Room to run. And he's going to bring it up to the 40-yard line before he stopped. I know that completion doesn't move the chains, but I love it nonetheless. 
You make sure that defense is aware of every eligible player going out. And this time, it was out of the backfield with the running back that shows he's adept at catching it as well. The commander is ready for the punt. And they bring him down to put a stop to that return. Nice kick there. It's a punt of 53 yards. And it'll be their football. Back now. Pressure on its way. Pass is caught by Addison. And he'll go down after fighting his way to the 32. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for on first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable. And it creates that space if you want to take a shot downfield. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. From the 32. Fires over the middle. Caught. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Well, the defense is really buckled down. That was a scoreless third quarter for us. It's Vikings football. They're down, but not out on the scoreboard. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. Shotgun snap, looking to throw. That won't be caught outright, it's incomplete. The tip definitely broke up that throw. And we'll see what they do here on second down. I think it's safe to say that without that ball being tipped, we are looking at a big game. It's a missed opportunity to push that offense but an even better play defensively to deny the throw. This is Jones. And he's brought down for a loss. You know, that's so hard for me, Kate. That's the type of effort that deserves better when it comes to the results. It's going to show up as a negative run on the stat sheet, but that was not the runner's fault. He did all he could to fight to get back to the line, but this defense just kept swarming. They're going to throw it on third and long. And he just gets rid of this one, but unfortunately, that means fourth down coming up. So many coaches love third downs and practice them so much, Kate. Why? Because they're the money down in the NFL. Whether it's a close game already out of hand, coaches know got to execute and convert on these third downs. So out now comes the punter. And the sunlight's not a problem for him. He looks up and makes the fair catch. So no return on that punt. And the commander's drive is going to start from deep on their own side of the field. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Hand off now to Eckler. And he sneaks this through the middle, maybe a gain of two. That's a pretty good stop on first down. This defense now gets a chance to dictate, and that's what all the great defenses want to do, Kate. They want to dictate it on their terms and not just be reacting to what the offense is always doing. Eight yards to go. Let's see how they approach this second down. From the 19. Can't connect over the middle. It's incomplete. Almost a completion of the wrong team there. So now it's going to be third and long. You need to buy your receivers enough time to get open along their route and your quarterback enough time to find and hit them with the throw. When the line doesn't hold up, incompletions follow. Daniels throwing on third. And even on third down, he sees no choice other than to get rid of it. Not the play they wanted. It's going to be fourth down. You know, it's a point of emphasis and practice each and every week, no matter where we go. How are we going to attack the coverage on third down? Well, they chose the wrong play off that call sheet that time. Punting unit out now. He sends this away, and oh, this is going to be a field flipper. Jukes at a one stop, and they bring him down to put a stop to that return. That punt finishes as a 60-yard effort. And it's going to be their football coming up. From the gun, Jones gets it. 
And his effort results in maybe two yards, but nothing more. You know, they got some positive yards. That's a good thing. But too many plays like that, it just is too hard to pile together, get first downs, it gets the better defenses in this league. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. From the 42. And that one's incomplete. There's the importance of staying in phase as a defender. He was all over him in coverage. And that really did help force the incompletion. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. They'll run the draw with Jones. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. When you get stuffed on a third down draw, it's really hard to look at your receivers. <laughs> you come off the field, Kate, and you find yourself on a different bench because they want the ball. They want to be a difference maker on third and six plus, and the draw going backwards, that makes no friends. Minnesota lined up in punt formation. And this is the fifth time he's been called upon today. And they bring him down to put a stop to that return. And that punt gets up to 59 yards. And they're going to be backed up deep in their own territory to begin this one. First and 10 now. Here's Daniels. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. And he's going to be brought down after getting this up to the 22. Every once in a while, it's fine to be conservative on first down, especially when you get enough to stay on schedule and get a little something coming out of it, too. Second down now, seven to go. From the gun, it's Daniels. Got a man, McCaffrey has it. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. Nice to see that connection, that chemistry working between the two of them. Here's first and 10 from the 34. Looking right, and he brings it in. And he's going to bring it up to the 40-yard line before he stopped. Second and three now. Again, Daniels to the air. He completes it in traffic. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy in midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. And that play goes for eight yards, and it keeps this drive moving. So critical, Kate, on those receiver screens to get that ball out with great precision. You don't want that receiver thinking about anything but navigating the blocks in front of him. That's well done by everybody. First and 10, a run to Robinson. And he gets some good yardage down to the 42. Just a little short, but still a nine-yard pickup. That's going to bring up second and one. So much to like about that run, Kate, particularly what he was able to get out of it. The defense, I think, feels a little fortunate they were able to track him down before an even bigger run and crossing that first down marker. Second and one. That's McLaurin on the quick slant. And he's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. That's good for seven yards. And the Commanders will have a first. Sure seems like he knew exactly what he wanted, and he got it going right where he wanted to with the ball off the snap. They're set up at the 35 now. Not first down. Here's Eckler. And he found a gap to take this down to the 28. It's a solid seven-yard pickup on first down. Now they're going to have second and three. Well, that doesn't net a first down. You get yards like that in the run game, you will take it in the NFL. Second and three now. From the 28. They did it. He made the interception. Picked up by Stephon Gilmore. Hits the 20. And the defense has come through. They're in the end zone, and that gives them the lead.
A chance to take their lead beyond a field goal on this point after. That one splits the uprights. And they'll continue adding to their lead. A quick chance at redemption after that pick six as it's sent away. His return starts at the five. He stopped on the return at the 27. The Commanders are being led back out there on offense by their quarterback. And you tell us this all the time, Brock. Touchdowns aren't the only stats that make a quarterback, right? Yep, he's nodding right now. But the absence of any from his ledger, well, that's problematic. And his struggles are indicative of the challenge that this offense as a group has really been fighting all game long. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Daniels coming back after that pick. He had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose. Incomplete. Well-timed strike by that defender to knock it free. And it's going to be second down. Timing is everything in life. And timing is everything defensively. That throw was just a little bit late and gave the defense time to close, deliver a pop, and knock that ball loose. Looking to throw it. Got a man over the middle, complete. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big game and a new set of downs. First and ten from a yard shy of midfield. Throwing now. That one falls to the turf. Couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. Looking for his wide receiver there. And it sets up second down. Making it harder than it needs to be right there. Just get the catch first. Guarantee some yards. And then worry about escaping the defenders and getting upfield. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. To throw. Ooh, would have been a big gainer if they connected, but they could not. Instead, third down coming up. The offense not shy about sending them downfield to try and stretch that secondary. Even still, one of the deeper targets you'll see him get. It's a shame they couldn't find a connection. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Here he is to throw. That could be it, folks. It's intercepted. Harrison Smith with the INT. Well, that's now two, Kate, that they've gotten him for picks in this game, and he's got to be careful. Right? You've got to protect the football. It is the greatest treasure you have as an offense. And this defense, well, they've got two in their pocket, and you know they're going to be going after number three. The Vikings taking the field on offense. That defensive stand might have been the final effort needed to seal away the victory, Brock, but can't quite take off the pads just yet. Offense has to finish this one out. You know, a few things here, Kate, to keep in mind, right? You got to slow the game down as a quarterback. Take every second off the clock. If you're handling the ball, you guard it with your life, and you make sure your defense doesn't come on the field again. They just did their job. Now you got to do yours. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. Jones wants more. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. Final timeout taken by the Commanders. That's all they had, so the offense free to start running the clock down now. Victory formation here. Looks like they're going to take a knee on first down. And they'll kneel this down. 
There's still some time to bleed off the clock, but the important factor is that the defense is helpless to stop it. You could just run that clock down as far as you're able and take off every single second. This won't run out the clock just yet, Brock. They're going to have to kneel it again after this one. And he's going to take a knee. Nothing left to do now, Kate, but celebrate on one side and watch on hopelessly from the other. What a hard-fought effort to get to this spot. And now you can enjoy the victory. Now for one final kneel down, partner, and this should do it. And they'll take a knee. So the Vikings pick up the win on the road. And finally, Brock, they can exhale and take a few breaths because uh, I don't imagine any of them were breathing easy during that one with how close this game was. Them or us? <laughs> both. <laughs> all of us. Yeah, Dean, is, all of the above. It is so hard, Kate, to match the adrenaline surge they feel right now and that they felt in every major turn throughout the second half. There's just something about a close game, the intensity that's there in every moment that you love to experience as a player and that you hope in all these moments you can execute so you're the one celebrating and riding that wave of emotion. So for Brock Heward, our incredible crew, everybody here at EA Sports, I'm Kate Scott signing off. We'll see you next time.